Good evening. Uh, welcome to the uh, May 28th uh, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. Uh, the first order of business uh, is to approve the minutes of the March 26th meeting. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. That's five zero. Three. Five. Okay. okay. Um, I guess before we get started, uh, I actually I don't think we have any old business. I don't see anything on the agenda. Um, as far as new business, before we get started, uh, I understand that the. Um, the request of Heather Dallas, uh, one in uh, India Rock Woods on the administrative appeal, that's been continued until our June 25th meeting. Is that right, Ben? That's correct. So we'll scratch that one from this agenda. Um, and that brings us to our first item this evening, which is to hear the request of Randy Talbot of 825 Shore Road. To amend the existing zoning board approval dated January 29, 2013. Um, let's see. Um, I guess we'll start with uh, um, Ben. Could you give us a brief overview on the application? Y yes, I can. As you stated, this variance was heard by the board January 29th of this year. Uh, Maria Chambers represented it. She was the owner of the property. Uh, now there's a new owner. Uh, the Talbots are the new owners of the property, and they would like a different garage design than what Ms. Chambers represented at the January 29th meeting. And I honestly wasn't sure if this was in my purview to approve this on my own or not, so I felt to err on the conservative side and bring it to a, a public setting. I, I think the board can use its judgment here. A variance was granted for them to be uh, four feet from the rear property line, and they're not asking to be closer than that to the property line. They're just asking for the structure to be slightly larger. It's, a, it's roughly 100 square feet larger than what was proposed prior. But the increase is into the middle of the property, so it's, it's not changing any of the setbacks that are tight, right? That's correct. The, and is, is there any change to the height? There's no change to the height. Okay. Have uh, you received any objections from anyone? I have not. I received two inquiries, but no objections. That's yeah, okay. I mean, I guess that's the, I mean, I'm happy to hear the, the, um, the request, uh, but I also think that um, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like within the existing footprint and the existing variance that's already been approved. The only aspect of it that seems like it does require additional uh, assessment and analysis is that in order to grant a variance, we had to make sure certain criteria were met, mm -hmm. um, which required looking at what the size of equivalent structures in the uh, nearest 10 properties were, and to do a comparison of the proposed structure relative to the size of those. So to the extent now that the proposed structure is larger, that comparison technically, I would say, has to be done against those structures to make sure it hasn't now created a situation where this structure is larger than any of the other surrounding structures. My recollection was that we were just looking to see if the setbacks were consistent, not the overall size of the garage. So I technically was not here at that meeting, but my, my, <laughs> so I here we go. what we actually looked at. But my reading of the ordinance or the grant of variances, we're supposed to look at that. But we were just varying the side setback, so I think all we were looking at was that it was that the 
a gr degree to which we were varying the setback was consistent with conditions in the neighborhood. I think that was the standard right. that we were looking at, not the yeah, overall size the of the garage. Right. Yeah. I just note the meeting minutes say that there was a presentation as to everything. So I completely defer to all of you who are actually present. Um, well, I guess, <clears throat> I guess my only, uh, I guess my I guess my original question stands which which is is this really um something that the board feels um, merits a, a review or is this something we want to um consider voting on now as to its you know the the, the merits of um, yeah, a further variance or not. What section is it that specifies where we look at variances? Does anyone remember off the top of their head? 19.45. It's 19.54, page 53 of the zoning. Did we put any special conditions on that variance? Um, I, the only thing uh, the, that we put in there was was that we we wanted the the rear setback um, was uh, I think it's supposed to be eleven. Uh, it had to be with uh, it couldn't be any closer than four feet. I think that was the only additional condition we put in there. I'm looking for the... That, that's correct. I guess my take after looking at this in answer to your question, John, is that it seems to me that if it doesn't impact the underlying, if the changes don't impact the underlying practical difficulty criteria and they don't impact the area in which we gave the variance or the variance was required, then I don't see why it would need to come back to us. I guess the counter argument would be if there was a approval granted for a variance to uh, build a structure that was, let's say, five feet by five feet in size, that was closer to the property line than normally allowed, and then the proposal was to make the structure 100 feet by 100 feet in size, but still not get any closer to the, the lot line. But what I'm understanding we, is that the dimensions that are on that four-foot side are exactly the same. Well, no, it, it's going to run longer along. It's going to run longer, it's closer is to it the house. Is it longer along that side? Or is it just no. coming in? More? In, it's coming in, so it's it's well, almost. So it's not longer along that side. It it is it, 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 it is, is longer. So this, this side is this longer. This was gonna it was approved for 20, 20, Six. 26 by twenty six. Now this is gonna be thirty four. So it is longer yeah. along the side. So it's twelve there. feet longer on that side. Eight. Eight. Eight feet. I'm not good at math, sorry. <laughs> we were told there'd be no math. Um, I, I think before we go there, I think we need to decide whether this is something we, we actually want to hear the requ request on. And, I, and I'm getting the sense that because... I would say it is something that should be considered just because it is a deviation from... It, 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 
in a way that's, to me at least, is somewhat meaningful given the change in size and the fact that it's extending along the uh, line where the setback was reduced. Okay. Anybody else have any no. disagree with that? Okay. So I guess with that, why don't we go ahead and hear the request of the, uh, of the Talbots? Uh, good evening. My name is Craig Cooper. I own Rainbow Construction. I'm here representing the uh, Talbots this evening who are with us uh, here. And they just drove 13 hours to be here. Um, they weren't sure they were going to make it, so they requested ahead of time that I might come and speak on their behalf uh, as their contractor. And I worked with the designer uh, to come up with this. As you know, this uh, was originally planned to be a 26 by 26 garage. I, that number was something approved uh, for a two-car garage. It's kind of a standard size for a two-car garage, I believe, for the certain setbacks. For the former owner to make this property more saleable, uh, the Talbots have purchased that property, and we've been trying to design them a garage that fit their personal needs now. And the fact that a garage could be built there was important to their purchase of the property. But like many garages here in Maine, 26 by 26, a pretty average double-sized car garage, doesn't allow you to put much more than two cars in it. And we've all seen many cars in Maine that you don't, don't have any cars in them, or maybe one with all the other stuff that we all tend to own, whether it be a snowblower, a lawnmower, et cetera. This house happens to have a wet basement. And so their intent by design was to change the size of the garage from 26 by 26. It's actually 24 on the front, sets in a little bit to make a little alcove. So that front right corner of the garage, as you look at from the streets, a little smaller. And this, what we're referring to in the plans you have, I believe, called a workshop. It's really a storage area for them to still accommodate, hopefully be able to put those things that they can't put in the basement and other things as such. Um, and maintain a two-car garage that they, they could actually park two cars in. If you can see from where I'm standing, this yellow area, which is really in the middle of the lot, the, the furthest, uh, the back of the lot, it's, a very, it's, a, it's an oversized lot, actually, is just extending the back about eight feet. But we shortened the front and took out this front corner, which is how we came up with just a few more square feet. And it's, it's much more practical for them to actually be able to use and store some things in it um, as well. Hence our request. Is that um, anything else you'd further like to add? As far as I know, that, that nobody in the neighborhood has objected. There's been verbal discussion with the neighbors that have, been, have, have approved it. And I think it's been public knowledge that they have the opportunity to be here this evening if they wanted. And there has been none. Okay. Uh, do we have uh, any questions from anybody here? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Um, and on the notice of this uh, notice, uh, this application was coming out. How long has it been the public knowledge? Two weeks. And has any notices been? Received good or bad or different as to this application concerning uh, this, this variance of the variance. No, I, I received two phone inquiries on it, just with general questions about the application, and uh, they they didn't express themselves for or against it. Just with some general questions about the about the hearing. Um, thank you. Um, where, where do you feel um, that uh, that the practical difficulty standard um, has been met here? Well, the general storage and the fact that the basement is wet, um, and uh, to just give them gen general storage, there's no other place on the property to put their stuff other than in the garage so and the be able to utilize it. Okay, so the idea would be that. Basically, the, above the garage would be there. Kind of hard to get there. the snowblower down and up and down. It's not going up in the basement or up in the ceiling, the and, attic. And it, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the intent is that, that 
basically above the garage is where you know a lot of their basement storage would be going. It could, there, yeah, they, and we would still utilize some of that. But there are many things, as we all know. I'm sure you all can only need to think about your own garages and what's in there. So I guess for for me the the issue is our ability to grant a variance is constrained by the fact that uh, we have to look at the significant economic injury and undesirable changes to the character in the of the neighborhood, and that requires us to look at what the ten nearest properties are like and determine that the structure is comparable in size uh, to those uh, adjacent garages. And so I obviously wasn't here for the prior consideration of the, uh, the variance, but if the garage is now becoming bigger than what was previously proposed, what I would need, and I'm just one member of the board, would be a comparison to the size of other garages in the neighborhood to make sure that this is not larger than the other garages, which would exceed our ability to grant the variance right. from my reading of the order. Was that done in the past variance? We're not sure that that was done. We don't believe there were 10 garages compared to that in the last I, I mean, at the, la at the hearing when the variance was granted, we definitely did have pictures of other, other garages. Okay. garages that were mm -hmm. non-conforming, and we did review those. Um, so we reduced the width in one area from 26 to 24, increased it in the back a little bit to make it relatively insignificant, uh, 100 square feet roughly. Yeah, I, uh, my recollection is that the comparison of other properties was actually quite thorough. I can't recall what the exact number was. It was 16 or 18 or, you know, whatever number of, of, uh, of, of um, neighbors. And, and, you know, m my sense was that the, that the change there was fairly consistent with what the character of the neighborhood was. I think we concluded last time around that the garage that was proposed last time warranted a variance. We issued a variance. We concluded that the practical difficulty was standard was met after looking at, frankly, an exhaustive review of pretty much every garage in the neighborhood. Right. Um, I don't see that we need to revisit all of the practical difficulty standards in order to say that an additional eight feet along that four foot setback is permissible. I think it's sufficient. I mean, I think we've met that standard for the variance already. I think it's sufficient to say that that standard has already been met and that all we're deciding is whether this change of 100 additional square feet, a small portion of which is along that four foot setback, is or is not significant enough to impact our decision on the underlying practical difficulty. And to my mind, it's not significant enough to take away that determination after looking at all those other garages. And obviously, I didn't see the prior presentation, unfortunately. But for me, adding 100 additional square feet to a garage in this neighborhood, most of the garages that I just am generally aware of in that area are much smaller. So even though garages in Maine tend to be larger in Mountain View Park, Stony Brook, that area, the homes are much older and the garages are much smaller. So from my perspective, I don't have any, the information in front of me to say that this is in keeping with the neighborhood for the size of the garages with the additional 100 square feet. Certainly during the design, the architectural features were, were intended to be in keeping with the neighborhood and all the other houses as well. Uh, I just wanted to recap on one of the um, pictures that was, or the drawings that submitted. Where, what is the actual area that's requiring a, a variance? Because if I'm correct, a portion of the 100 feet does not require a variance. So we're only talking about not 100 square feet. We're talking about um, eight feet eight. by whatever it is. Correct. So what's that number that we require a variance for? I think the permissible setback on that side was 10 or 11 feet, and we let them go to four. So it would be eight times. What is the permissible setback over eight there? Eight times six. F 15. 15. So it would be 11 times eight. So 88 feet is what we're talking about. So it is most of it. But again, I'm not good at math. So. <laughs> I think that was right. <laughs> um, any other questions from the, uh, from the board for Mr. Cooper? OK. Uh, is there any public uh, comment? Thank you, Mr. Cooper. And I, I guess you. Uh, mentioned we got a few inquiries via phone, or you did, but no letters or anything of that nature. So, correct. Okay. 
Um, okay, so with that, I guess we'll close the public comment portion of uh, the presentation and um, open it up to our thoughts here. My recollection from the first time that around that we did this, I mean, was that we had kind of an overview map that showed, that plotted out the locations on the tax map of the entire neighborhood of all the garages, and we looked at that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if we have that readily available to look at it again, to look at the sizes. I, I could have it quickly. I, I don't have enough copies for everybody. Yeah. But did that have the size of every garage? I, I mean, if my we, recollection was that it was squares like this, but I don't know that it would be to scale. There, my recollection. were highlighted. My recollection is that there were squares on the tax map, and there were photographs, and I I don't recall size being discussed. The the board. The board focused on proximity and character of the neighborhood, and uh, rightly or wrongly, I don't remember the size of each of the neighbors yeah, being I mean, discussed. I don't, I don't recall the size being discussed, which is why, since we weren't really focused on the size then, and I remember the pictures, and this doesn't seem like it's a, a large change from what we approved before, since we weren't so focused on the size before, I'm inclined to allow this because we'd start to have we'd have to start to look at how many square feet each garage was and yeah. it wasn't the original I, I know that analysis didn't get into the square footage no. of the garage no we didn't and I think too that one of the reasons why we signed off I, my recollection is that when she first came in there were going to be variances on two sides and when she came back she proposed just the variance on this side because we, she wanted to push it as close to that side because that was the abutting neighbor's preference as well. And so that's why we went with that four on that side instead of smushing it on this side as well. And I think that given that stated preference from the abutting neighbors, it would be a shame to push it the other way in order to, when that's what we've already signed off on and already done the analysis of the variance in order to conclude that it was consistent with the neighborhood and with what folks were looking for out there. And again, the, the previous application was, was quite thorough. I mean, it was, it was the second time around, as we recall, the first time yep. we didn't take it up. So it was a very thorough application. We did very carefully consider the other structures in the neighborhood. And my only point was on the photographs in that previous application. There was one I recall that there was a, a garage on the ground floor, and then there was living space or um, occupant space uh, on top. So uh, if, the, if the height is an issue, I don't think that is the case here. We're talking about the width of that on the back line. That was the only point in that. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no change with the height. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Um, are we ready to take a vote on this? Well, I, I guess I would I'd ask the board basically if, to the extent any of you recall, um, to the extent that I, ass I would assume that procedurally the prior presentation was, was part of the record for this, this existing variance. So do any of you recall generally what the size of, it, of any of the equivalent garages were in any of the other photographs? I mean, they were, they were one and two car garages. I don't... We, we, we did not discuss how many square feet or how long they were or how wide they were. That kind of goes to my first point, which is that what we were looking at was a setback variance. And so what we were looking at was whether these setbacks were consistent with the character of the neighborhood, which is what is required by the practical difficulty standard. Size, location, and well, looking at the proposed design, I guess, separate from a uh, vote up and down is based on the presentation that occurred before was is this uh, equivalent to the other structures that were presented in the neighborhood uh, i'll speak on that point the, the other garages in the neighborhood range from 10 years up to 100 years some of the early garages were um, essentially one car garage um, and, but on, on the earlier application uh, that person apparently um, 
we shouldn't be talking her personal details, but I think if she was a single person with children, and uh, it's a different amount of stuff, if you will, that she was explaining to us. Uh, and so that when we were talking about the 26 by, and I think it was 26 by 26 was the size that we were talking in the original application. And that was for her to, uh, essentially she had outgrown the space in her house and she needed to put stuff um, in the garage. And so she had no garage and it was 26 by, or 26. And you're suggesting that we should uh, incorporate by reference the first application so that any going further, any variance that we discussed today, it's two applications that were, you know, that's the record that we're talking about. Procedurally, I was viewing this as the same variance or are we deeming this a new variance that's being granted? I think it's an amending yeah, I think variance. I do too. Granted. I do too. And I think we should incorporate right now. I am incorporating <laughs> the prior record in the pre in the underlying variance into this record at, uh, for this amendment. And that that's what leaves me. I don't know if I can vote yes or I don't know to, yes or no because of the fact that I'm not intimately familiar with that presentation is my my issue. I might just abstain if I'm permitted to. Uh, no, I didn't think I'm allowed. <laughs> we can proceed with the vote. My vote may be irrelevant anyway, so. Okay. Um, so, why don't we, uh, can we want to make a motion to, uh, For this, uh, for, uh, for this uh, request. I move we approve the application to amend the underlying variance um, to allow a four foot setback um, and to increase the space and bulk within that four foot setback to the size shown on the plan submitted as part of the application. Second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Chris? <laughs> okay. Uh, all in favor of the motion? Any opposed? Since I have to vote. So. Okay. <laughs> okay so, the, so the amendment passes four to one. Um, and I guess uh, since we've entered, uh, that was the J January, is that the January 26th? 29th. January 29th um, application. Um, uh, and uh, those finding of facts. So I will, um, why don't we go through the finding of facts here, um, adding the January 29th. Uh, variance application um, to that as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is a request to uh, amend the January 29, 2013 zoning board approval to add a garage to the property at 825 Shore Road. Randy and Cindy Talbot are the new owners of the property. Uh, on January 29, 2013, the zoning board approved a variance for a 26 by 26 garage to be constructed on the property with a setback four feet on the northerly side of the property. Um, the new owners of the property would like to have the garage, would like to have a garage that is 24 by 24 with an additional 10 by 20 workshop space inside of it. This increases the size of the garage by 100 square feet. Um, Although the proposed structure has changed, the January 29th, 2013 approval remains valid for this new garage uh, because it will, it will still comply with the four foot setback that was approved. Um, and we've already, I guess, referenced this is an amendment to the January 29th meeting. Um, should we add in here just that the, I'm not sure it was in the other one, that, um, that the height of the garage um, will be unchanged I guess with that, can, I, can we have a vote on the finding of facts? Um, sorry, John, yep. may I um, comment on the paragraph four? Yes. 
uh, with it, it's the second sentence. Um, that's 24 by 24 with an additional 10 by 20 workshop space inside of it. Um, it is a auxiliary bolt-on. It's not inside, but I'm not sure that the, the right word is inside of it. Not sure how we'd want to correct that. And then the next uh, sentence talks about uh, 100 square feet. That suggests that the 100 square feet is an increase of the variance. And it gets back to the point that Joanna talked about. Not that saying mm -hmm. that she doesn't know math, but 88 square feet um, is the point that I'm, um, I wanted to include. I suggest it, including. Maybe uh, instead of inside of it, attached to it. Why don't we just say what the dimensions are that they're proposing? They're changing it to, instead of 26 by 26, to the dimension within the four feet will be 32, is it? 34? 26 by 34. 26 by 34. Yeah. For an additional 88 square feet within the setback. Okay. The, uh, so see, the new owners of the property would like to have a garage. Like to have a garage that is should be 24 by 36, right? Except that it's that's only for that northern side. It's okay. not that big on the right. front. With an additional okay, additional 10 by 20 yeah. attached to it. This increases the size of the garage by. Well, it is 100 square feet, it's just 88 is the variance, right? 88 is the space and bulk change within the setback, yeah. You, you could say there's an additional 88 square feet of non-conforming area. Yep. Floor area? Yes. Okay, this, uh, <clears throat> this increases the size of the garage by. What do we want? Is that An last? Additional non 88 square floor feet. Square. Th this creates an additional 88 square feet of non-conforming floor area? Okay, so we're striking this increases the size of the garage by 100 square feet and substituting it for this creates an additional non-conforming variance of 88 square feet. That's a question. Are we striking the last sentence? Yes. Then I'd say five is not a finding of fact technically. And if we scratch that from the finding of fact or somehow make it part of the conclusion, then uh, we can get a nice unanimous vote on the findings of fact at least. Because, to, because arguably that's already within the, the request for an amendment in number one? Uh, or it's the basically five is the conclusion. In a, in a okay. Can we say that we're in the findings of fact that we're incorporating the record from the January 29, 2013 proceedings? <clears throat> well, does the number one say this is a request to amend the January, that's does number one do that? I'm not sure. Okay, so we'll add it. We could just add it in one as a second sentence too.
something like the record of that meeting is hereby incorporated into this record or something okay. like that. The record of that meeting is incorporated into into this record. Okay. All right, should we go through it again to see if I may have it right? Um, <clears throat> okay, this is a request to amend the January 29, 2013 zoning board approval to add a garage to the property at 825 Shore Road. The record of that meeting is inc incorporated into this record. Uh, two, Randy and Cindy Talbot are the new owners of the, pro of the property. Three, on January 29th, 2013, the Zoning Board approved a variance for a 26 by 26 garage to be constructed on the property with a setback of four feet on the northerly side of the property. The new owners of the property, the, four, the new owners of the property would like to have a garage that is 24 by 24 with an additional 10 by 20 workshop space attached to it. Um, this increases the, this creates a, a, an additional non-conforming variance of 88 square feet. Um, it's just a point of clarification, you can say that it doesn't matter. Using the word additional variance suggests that there's two variances at play. Not sure how we would word it other than something like we're amending the first variance to increase the space or something like that. It's a technical point. I don't want to come back to this type of variance problem. I just want to make sure we're all clear that uh, there's no suggestion that there's two variances here. What was that last sentence you read on four again? This creates. An additional non this, in this this increases the non-conforming variance by 88 square feet. The non can we change that to the non-conforming floor area by 88 square feet? Or the permissible. This increases the one more time the non <coughs> the permissible non conforming floor area mm -hmm. by eighty eight square feet. Also for number four, I, I just realized that I have a typo in there. It's it's actually 24 by 26 with, and it, as it shows on the plans, it's 24 by 26 with an additional 10 by 20 workshop space. Mm -hmm. uh, that does not change the 88 square, doesn't change the amount of non-conforming area. Okay, let's do number four again. The new owners of the property would like to have a garage that is 24 by 26 with an additional 10 by 20 workshop space attached to it. This increases the permissible non-conforming floor area by 88 square feet. Number five, the height of the garage remains unchanged from the January 29th approval. Okay. Uh, can we take a vote on the finding of facts? All in favor of the finding of facts? Any opposed? 5-0. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Have a safe drive. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Um, next on our agenda is to hear the request of Eileen Monahan of Three Pebbles Point Lane to reconstruct and expand a nonconforming structure at Two Tucker Lane based on section 19.4-3B3 of the zoning ordinance. Ben, some background. Sure. This application is a demolition and rebuild of a non-conforming structure. Uh, originally, the applicant came to town hall with a set of plans uh, that showed the base floor footprint and a second floor that was rather awkward. And the, the, the second floor space was laid out in an awkward fashion in order to avoid the setback, in, in order to adhere the second floor floor area to the setbacks. And as presented that way, I, I could have approved that building permit with the, with the second floor space meeting all of the setback requirements. I mentioned to the applicant that if, if you, you, you have the option to go in front of the zoning board and basically square off and get slightly more second floor space out of this. Uh, so they're, they, they're building on the same footprint. They're basically getting an additional half, two thirds of a story above. How many setbacks are impacted? Excuse me? How many setbacks are impacted? Is the Shipwreck Cove Road the front? They, those, both Tucker Lane and Shipwreck Cove will have a front setback of 25 feet. They, they both count as frontage. And, and the, the side setback is 25 and, and the rear setback is 20. So they, they would meet it, let's see. So none of them are met, but they're, but they're already not met? Right, so, so you can see along Shipwreck Cove, there's a corner of the structure that's 10.41 feet mm -hmm. and a corner that's 17.34. Mm -hmm. So originally they had a, a line, they, they had the 25 foot setback line coming through a small portion of the dwelling and uh, sort of diagonally through the dwelling and they were not going to have living space, floor area, in that area. And, and they did the same thing on the other side. The, along Tucker Lane, it's, it's a very small piece that doesn't meet the 25-foot setback. And, and there actually, there wouldn't be any, along Tucker Lane, there would be no floor area increase. So, so technically, that wouldn't apply tonight. So so the Tucker Lane side is unchanged from the existing nonconformity? Correct. Is it just the Shipwreck Cove Road that is being changed? It, it is, uh, and uh, let's see, and the rear line, which <laughs> as I'm viewing it. Is that it, the it, northwest or the northeast? Northeast. Okay. That, that setback is 20, and you can see it's uh, 13 and a half feet, roughly, mm -hmm. from the line. What are those setbacks currently? The, the, on the existing property? As shown on the plan. Oh, so this survey is as it is right now. This is, this is, okay. an, this is I don't think the footprint's changing, right? Right, th this is an existing, expansion. Yeah, yeah. Th this is an existing conditions plan, and, and then, and then the smaller plans show what's proposed. And they're not going into those setbacks anymore, just up 
within the existing setbacks. Correct. Oh. Okay. Okay. Any other more questions just for Ben? No, uh, on the photographs. Uh, on the photographs. The house that's gray. Is that not shown on the drawing? Where, where would that be on the drawing, um, Ben? That, that would be further down Tucker Lane. Like where the legend is? So it would be down the section. Yeah, exactly, where the legend is. Yeah, and what's the, do you know, we're looking at 15, 20 feet between the homes there? Well, it's at least. 24 feet, so. Yeah, I, I think it's probably closer to 30, but I can't say for sure. Thank you. Does that count as a rear setback on that side or as a side? Well, it, it could be interpreted either way. In a, in a case like this where someone has two fronts, I, I think they have the option to call either to call one of those a rear and one of those a side in the the ordinance. And if it was a side, it would be 15, right? You no, know, a side is 25, and a oh. rear is 20. Okay. Okay, uh, Miss Monahan, would you like to address the board? And I'm one of the owners of um, Two Tucker Lane. It's part of the People's Cove community. I don't know if you're aware of People's Cove, but uh, we went through um, sort of a reorganization a couple of years ago, and we were all on lease land. And the owner offered the land for sale to the association, and we had to buy the land as a single parcel. And then we were able to um, have everybody buy their own property. This is the last piece. The, the, the existing owner at the time that we were going through this reorganization were not in a position to buy their land and they needed to sell it. And we had to put a small group of current owners down in People's Cove together to buy this property. So it's been on the market now for the last year. The house has not been lived in since 2009, if not you know, more than that. So it's really an eyesore. It's, um, we finally found an interested buyer who has the courage to, and the skills, the skills to build it and the courage to come before the zoning board. And um, not only that, but we've also gotten the uh, written consent of all the abutters. He's been willing to work with them to save their views. So we're just hoping that um, we've answered all your questions and that we can move forward and continue with the sale. And put a nice house there that somebody can actually live in. Do you have any other questions for us? We have lots of, I'm sure we'll have lots of questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's the characters of this board. I um, but it, 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 is there any, uh, do you have anything further to add to, to, to your application before we dive into that? Um, you know, if we just address each issue, you know, I think that um, it's a modest house. We're not, we're, we're building it on the existing footprint. Um, the slope of the land isn't changing. Um, dealing with soil erosion, we're using best practices for erosion and sedimentation control. There are no other structures on the property. We're on public water. As I said, the impact on views, all the neighbors have given signed consent to the changes, and we're not gonna be changing any of the vegetation. So I'd like to think that we've addressed all the issues. Do we have copies of the, or do, do we receive any comments from anyone on this application? I, I did receive a comment from a woman at the rear of the room. She may want to speak for herself. Okay. okay. It was the only comment I received on the application. In, does the record have a copy of the signed consent from the 
I have it right here, actually. Because, you know, part of our association rules are that we need to get the permission of the abutters and anybody's, uh, anybody whose view will be um, affected. So, um, can I hand these to you and then you can... Yeah, we probably want to put those in the record. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's part of what you have, but just in case, and everybody has signed that who is affected. So, so all, the, all the members of the association have signed? No, not all the members. The way the rules are, it's that if um, anybody who is an abutter or whose view is affected, if they agree, then um, the association agrees with the plans. If one of the parties does not agree, then what we have to do is take it to the whole association and then they vote on it so that one, one or two people couldn't stop somebody from you know, building something that was considered reasonable. Okay. So the fact had to go through that step. We didn't have to do that because everybody signed the plans. Okay. John, I have a question. Yes. Um, on the, uh, the board has just received the, um, the signature of being approved by the association. Can you just go through the names uh, and, and explain to us where these people live or abut the property in question? Sure. Just so we can uh, attribute their signature okay. um, to the space. The house that's directly behind, which would be for Tucker Lane. Now, would that be the gray house? That we're that's the gray house, yeah, that's exactly. Uh, that's uh, Doris and Craig Komulainen. And her biggest concern was she's got a picture window on the second floor. She wanted to make sure that the, the pitch of the second story didn't affect her view, which it doesn't. And then um, behind that house is um, Rachel and Ed Perry. And I'm not, what's the address? What's your? Six. Would that be the brown one? That's the brown one. On the other photo? Yes. And then there's a yellow house that's on Tucker Lane. I'm not sure it would be in the pictures, mm -hmm. but it's closer. It's sort of between the brown house and the gray house. So if you drive down Tucker Lane, it's on the right-hand side of Tucker, and those houses are on the left-hand. Okay. And I'm sorry, and who, who is that individual? Um, she just bought it last year. Do you know what her name is? Liz. Pavu, maybe? Elizabeth Pavu? Yes, Par yes. Paru? <laughs> yes. And then in front of the house is um, the, the total scribble that you see on there is our actual treasurer of the association. His name is uh, Lawrence Godro. And then next to his house would be Ellie Cobley. And I'm sorry, where are those two homes situated? Um, they're, they're on, uh, so it would be in front of Two Tucker Lane. Um, so directly in front of the house. So they're actually on Shipwreck Cove Road. Okay. So directly in front of the house. And then as you're looking at that house, it's to the left of it. Does that help? I had a follow-up question, um, of course. See, he was, John was right. We have plenty of questions. No. <laughs> My, uh, I'll just r uh, mention this point. Uh, Edward Perry, is that correct? Correct. Uh, there's a, a notation after his name on the condition that no dormers are added. Right. Um, I raised, is, is that correct? And that's the, the reservation that, that? Yes. Okay. I'm sure we'll talk about that uh, more, no doubt. Is, is there any um, recourse among the um, association if there were to be dormers added? Can that person then object and 
how does that work through the association? So do you mean added like after the building is constructed? Yeah, or in the construction process. Sometimes that happens. Right. Or, or even a subsequent owner um, wishes to do a DIY and add yeah. more space upstairs. Well, they would have to come. I'm not sure they could add dormers. I mean, isn't there an issue with you can only add space? I'm looking at Ben here. Um, you can only increase the size by 30%, and you can only do that one time. So I don't think that the code allows it. Is, is this how close is this? I think that's right. I guess I was just wondering whether there's what the recourse is through the association if that condition that's written in here isn't honored. Does he? I'm just trying to figure out how yeah. much we need to address that and how much the association does right. that. Well, this is all new to us, you know, in terms of the association. Before that, it was up to the, uh, the, the owner of the land. You know, she could determine what somebody could do or what they could not do. So what we try to do as an association is to not give any one person that much power. So um, I'd like to think that we're all reasonable, but I'd like also to think that that plays into the code of Cape Elizabeth and that that wouldn't be allowed anyway. Sorry, while we're talking on the point, when we, Ben, could you comment on that? Let's, hypothetically, let's say that this house is built and uh, next year it's sold to me, for example, and I wish to put on dormers on either side. Would I be able to do that? If, if you expanded the floor area, you, you would have to come back in front of the board. If, uh, if, you, if you did a, a small dormer just for light or on, the, on the second floor, you, you could do a small dormer that didn't add floor area that would be permissible without board approval. So that, that hypothetical demonstrates the point, is that this, the, the plans here um, goes up and, and, and build. A subsequent owner, this new owner, or a subsequent owner could build the dormers, but not be within the, the remit of the code, of, well, it would be for the building application, but it wouldn't be subject to uh, zoning board of appeals. Is that right? Well, I'm saying expanded there. Area. Right. So the, the person could build it uh, and then run afoul as to that condition. So that's when Joanna was asking whether the association has the, the tools to prevent or uh, force that owner to change and remove the dormer um, because of the condition that's set by Mr. Perry. So it sounds like, no, we don't have um, the, the uh, association Association does not sound like it does have that power. And people would be acting reasonable, sure, but then the people just build. So then one of the issues that we'll probably have to address shortly is that if we proceed down that road, we have to ad address that condition that's put in this association mm -hmm. uh, document. I mean, here's the other thing. I mean, we, we have lower height rules than the town does. So, you know, somebody could come in there and just basically not pay any attention to our rules, you know what I mean? And get a permit and build it, and we don't have any teeth to stop that either. You know, so, I mean, I'd hate to think that, that um, what somebody could potentially do in the future would prevent us from selling this property to somebody who's not even going to do that. You know what I mean? Well, so, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I guess what I was trying to figure out, sorry, John, is whether it would work for us to do something like, assuming we got there in our discussion, like saying, this is approved, mm -hmm. as it's shown, mm -hmm. and that's it. But I don't know, given that it's just a purchase and sale, whether that is something that would work in this situation. Oh, that would absolutely work. OK. Yeah. And, and just so we're clear, the property is partially within the Shoreland Zone Overlay District. Is that right? The, so that's correct. It ends about halfway through the property? I believe so. But we're clearly outside of the 75 feet. Clearly? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> um, I, I guess maybe moving a little bit uh, uh, to the roof line or, or to the height. Um, I, I'm still looking at, at the sketch you handed out. 
Um, I see some notations on, on this that look like the elevation is 20, 25, 26 and 26 and a half, 26.6 inches. Yes. Is the is the apex of the of the roof line? It's the yes, the okay. tip. Okay. And what's the what's the current height of the of the uh, structure? I don't know what the current height is. It's only one story. Okay. You know what the current height is, Mike? About 18 feet. With the chimney, you might have a little more than that, too. There's a question for the CEO. So um, just to clarify the record, that 30% expansion limit doesn't apply to this property. Correct. Does anybody uh, else have questions for the applicant? No. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, does uh, anyone from the public care to address the board? Yes, sir, please. When you come up, just state your name and address, please. My name is uh, Edward Perry. I own the house at uh, 6 Tucker Lane, which is uh, one house away from Eileen's house. Um, I was the one who wrote the little note about the uh, dormers. Uh, and one of the reasons we came tonight was we, we were kind of concerned. Uh, it is true that the abutters did look at a sketch and sign off on, on the sketch. Um, but I also asked to get a copy of the sketch back, which I never did. Um, so the first thing I'd like to know is, are we talking about the same plan? I mean, I signed the sketch, and I don't, I'm not sure you're looking at the same sketch I'm thinking of. I have a pile um, of extras. I have a pile of extras, too. Oh, okay. This is what we were just handed. Yeah. Can you hand them to the woman at the end? That's the proposal. These are different. I think Eileen is, is right in that uh, what happened approximately two years ago was everybody purchased their uh, individual lots. The lots were given descriptors. Uh, the two lots behind uh, Eileen's building uh, were given descriptions as partial water views. Um, this building from the sketch is 26, over 26 feet high from the peak. The two buildings behind it are 25 feet high. It is, all three buildings are right in line. Uh, so you imagine no matter what you do, you're gonna affect the view of the two buildings behind. Uh, we signed off on this plan uh, because it looked like it was fairly unobtrusive. 
and they were considerate the way they ran the ridge pole direction and the houses would behind still would have a view over the lower part of the roof. And uh, we got concerned when my wife came in and, and uh, to town hall and they were talking with the code enforcement officer and he was talking about adding an expansion which would effectually do the, effectually do the same thing as two dormers. If you raise the two low sides of the roof, you've already blocked off everybody's view in the middle, so now they have views over the low side, which we said, oh, okay, we can do that. They, they can expand the building, it'll still be nice, it'll be marketable, and we'll still be able to look over the sides. But if you expand that to a full second floor, now the two people behind don't have a water view. And really that's what the whole abutter situation and the whole uh, People's Cove Association was there to protect. Uh, they were not so concerned about uh, side offsets and everything because we, we knew that everybody had to follow the side offsets. But because the, there are 26 or 24 buildings down there and everybody either is on the water or has a water view, everybody is concerned about saving the water view of all the buildings. And what happens is if, we, if two people object and say, we, we don't like the plan, uh, it's not working for us, and we can't work anything out with the builder, and then it just goes to the association, and the 20-something people will just vote it in. And the two people are, you know, you're out of luck. You got, out, you got outvoted by the group. And uh, that's, that's basically what would happen here. If we, if we made a big stink and we didn't get any support, that would be it. And so, sorry, we're building the, the three-foot the three-story building in front of you, and you know that, that's the way it's going to go. Uh, fortunately for us, this builder came in with something that's, it looks good. I mean, it's something that everybody can live with. And Doris, who's elderly, and her son, who's in California, signed off, and so did the other abutters whose view would be affected. But if we start changing this and saying, yeah, let's add that full second story. I mean, no sense having that second story up there if you can't use it. Let's put some extra bedrooms up there. All of a sudden, that rule where, you know, let's try to save some of those water views is gone. And there's nothing we're going to be able to do about it. If you approve it, we can go and say, well, yeah, okay, we'll put it to the whole association. The, the association will just vote it in, and, and uh, that'll be the end of it. That's just the way it's going to go. So, I mean, this, this plan looks acceptable to us. This is the plan we signed off on. If you turn around and say, yeah, now we're going to add a full second story, then I, I, I wouldn't sign off on it, but I know it won't do any good. And I, I don't think Doris would sign off on it, the, the person behind, but I think her son would probably advise her from California, go ahead, sign off on it. It's not going to do any good. So yeah, I don't know if we're going to get to that level of detail. I mean, I, I think that... I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I don't want to speak for anybody else on the board, but I, if, if the variance is, is approved, right. um, it's approved. Um, and um, w per perhaps with some conditions, perhaps not. I understand that, you're, you're, that, the, that the association has a, what is it, a 28 foot um, height restriction in your, in your, in your, uh, in your bylaws. Right. Um, and this is calling for something less than that. So, yeah. um, you know, that to, to me seems that I mean, that's probably as far as, as, as we can take it. I mean, we, I'm not sure what, what happens two or three owners from now. So basically, I mean, if, as long as they follow the original footprint, they can do anything they want as long as it's inside 28 feet. In order to, for, we're, a, look, we're, we're reviewing this under the non-conforming structure reconstruction or replacement standard of the ordinance. Right. And so um, it has to come because the, to us, because the existing structure doesn't meet the setbacks. Yeah. And I think it probably is within our purview to put conditions on there about what that construction can look like. Yeah. Um, I don't know that the plans here are identical to 
the plans here, but they're yeah, substantially similar. It right. looks like maybe there's a difference of a chimney wasn't shown here and it yeah. is shown here. Right. Um, and maybe the peak is a little bit actually steeper on here. I mean, go. it looks like this one goes in four and a half feet and on this plan it goes in six feet, so it might actually Right. pinched a little more which yeah. would give a steeper peak right. it's hard to say but that's what it looks yeah. like because it looks like it's showing six feet on here and four and a half on here but I think that that's something that we can look at and then it is certainly not open given that it's a non-conforming structure for anything at all adding floor area on that second floor to be done they I believe that would have to come back to us if there were to be a change in floor area okay so basically, the plan that you would approve tonight would be similar to this, according to the other pages that you have. And then if a, a, another person wanted to expand, they would come back and do it another time. I think if they wanted to add more non-conforming floor area, which any new floor area on the second floor would be, they'd have to come back to us. But if they wanted to add just like a dormer for a skylight or something, that didn't add floor area that they would not have to come back. So basically somebody could add dormers on the sides here and it would be the same thing as the second floor? Um, not if it added floor area, so they couldn't. But, but you could make the first floor ceiling instead of being eight feet tall, 20 feet tall. I don't know the answer to that question. I think that that would increase the space in bulk, but I don't know, the non-conforming space in bulk. Well, but if, I mean, if the dormers are put kind of higher up on the roof for just light and not for floor area, that would, you, you could put dormers sure. on without changing. I'm not sure if that would increase the space in bulk such that it would be considered additional non-conforming. I don't know. In my opinion, the board is reviewing for impact on views. So if, if there was an additional proposal for a building permit, that further impact the view, I also think that would kick it back here to the board. I think we can certainly consider all of that in drafting conditions as we go into our deliberations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Thank you, Ivan. Okay, with that, we'll um, close the public comment portion of the, uh, the presentation. Um, turn it over to the, all of us. It's just an initial matter not to eat a dead horse on this, but I think previously I was, <laughs> the CEO knows where I'm going on this. Uh, previously I expressed the opinion that issues like this where it's within the shoreland zone are assessed, are analyzed under 1944B, um, I think the rest of the board previously voted that it's assessed under 1943, even though 1943 is entitled nonconformance outside of shoreland and resource protection districts. Um, just for consistency with our prior deliberations, I wanted to flag that issue. And I noted just because I think one of the initial questions is which, uh, which section of the ordinance are we doing this analysis under. Doing it under 1944 is that it would mean that it would just be a CEO approval, not us. It, it, this is, basically, uh, my recollection of the prior discussion was basically, um, I basically took the position the text says what the text says, and 1944 says it's for nonconformance within the Shoreland Performance Overlay District, and 1943 explicitly states that it's for nonconformance outside the Shoreland and Resource Protection Districts. Yeah, but, but all of those provisions are that. for setbacks from the water bodies. Yep. And so it seems like when they, they used the term shoreland protection zone, 
as in the larger sense, but they were really only talking about the 75 feet. Yep. And I don't want to completely belabor yeah. this previous debate, and I believe I was on the losing end of that prior. Yes, you were. <laughs> <laughs> but, the text but you is, are consistent. <laughs> the, the text is what the text is, and the ordinance hasn't been amended yet. So, I, I did bring it to the attention of the planner. Okay. And has, although we're going a little afield, has that been brought up to the planning board of the town council as of yet? Not that I'm aware of. It's not resonating with anybody, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so we're looking at 1943B3. Three. Three on page 38, reconstruction or replacement. Yep. And that says that reconstruction of a non-conforming structure not in compliance with the setback limitations may be permitted provided that such reconstruction is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent as determined by the DBI. In no case shall a structure be reconstructed or replaced so as to increase its non-conformity. And if I, for consistency with one of our other prior decisions, I don't have the meeting minutes and wasn't able to pull them up quickly, but we had that one decision where there was the property at the corner, it was of Sawyer, where they basically went, they did a vertical ex uh, oh, the exchange. Oh, That was did, last month, wasn't it? Yeah. Did we deem that an increase in nonconformity? No. Okay. And it's, it's within the existing footprint, but if we're going from 18 feet to 26 and a half, why is that not increasing the nonconformity? The, the nonconformity is the horizontal setback to the property line. The, the height of the structure is not nonconforming. Okay. Because 35 feet would be the nonconforming height. Okay. Right. Okay. Sorry, Ben, the 35 feet being the height defined height of the building. Under the, under the ordinance, right? That's where you right. 35 feet. You know, in that prior one, there was no one um, expressing concerns about views either at that corner of Sawyer. And, and here, I think the case is a little bit different. We have, you know, a association approval process where there has been an expressed concern and condition on the dormer size and so you know I'm certainly comfortable with a proposal falling under this standard but I would like to see it be conditioned on um, compliance with the plans submitted with the application should we just enter this into the record yes I think it is in now if you gave it to That's us true. and it you know I think these plans, these more detailed plans, are pretty consistent mm -hmm. with the other ones. Just to clarify, uh, sorry, uh, Chris, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, there is an increase in square feet of floor area, though, right? Yes. So, for that reason, it doesn't fall purely under subsection three, thus the need for the variance. Yes. Uh, Is it a the, variant? Or, no. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sloppy language. No. Um, just for clarification, the record was the, the one-page form that's been signed by members of the association. Um, we're also saying that the actual, as of today's date, the several page drawn, this is also part of the record. It's more detailed. The significance of the single page, just so that we're clear, is the signature as well as the limitation of one uh, Mr. Perry, and also that the form and shape of the single pager is substantially similar to the multiple page uh, part of the application. 
it appears to me, I mean, I didn't do a really detailed review, but it does appear that these plans have a chimney that isn't shown on this, and it appears that there's a handwritten notation on this plan on this top left view, which shows an, an apparent indent on the roof slope of four and a half feet. And then if you look at the last page of these more detailed plans, you'll, it appears that that indent of unusable floor area is six feet, which would give a more pinched appearance and would therefore allow for a greater view. Um, and so it appears to the extent that there are obvious differences that I observed in the last five minutes between these two plans, they would be more acceptable to people who had concerns about views from behind the house. So for our purposes, the document that governs for the appearance of the structure that may be approved this evening, the multiple pager, the significance of this one pager is the signatures in the language in the top left, as well as the description, I think it's the height and um, certain descriptions that associated with the building orientation. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I mean, for all intents and purposes, we've got, again, the, the more detailed plan, that's the less detailed plan, but with the signatures. And it, it, if I'm hearing you right, and I think just my own sentiment is there's, you know, how, how do you incorporate, I, mean, every, I think everyone's trying to kind of um, incorporate the, the specifics to, of, the, of the, the building design into the, into the approval or the, into the finding of facts. And you can do that by, you know, ref referring to the plans. And I, I mean, I don't know how much further we can take it. No, I think that's fine. The, the, I guess the, the two line items for the findings of fact, one would be the, the multiple page detailed plan with the latest version of the house to mm -hmm. be built. Um, and there's the limitation aspect in the approval of the signatures that's significant for the purpose of interpreting the detailed plan. And are you looking to also potentially limit it uh, to, to exclude dormers as being to be added? That's one alternative. The other alternative is that the only thing that can be built is this, this piece of paper here, the, the detailed plan. Nothing else can be built. And if there's a, an intent to build something different, it has to come back to the board. The problem I see is I don't see subsection uh, giving up the battle for 1944. Assuming uh, that we're proceeding under this section of the ordinance, I don't see where we have the ability to uh, contingent the approval on any aspects of the plan design outside of it meeting the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent possible. And there's no changes in setback occurring here because it's all remaining in the footprint. So I'm not sure how we can hook these limitations on. Well, we're definitely impacting the second floor setback and we're reducing the permissible space and bulk on the second floor. And that second floor is the floor that's being added. It is the increase and we're saying Assuming we get there, what, where I am is that we're saying that second floor is okay, but it's as shown. And is it as shown here? No, in the more detailed ones. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Chris, what section were you referring to when you just spoke? It sounds like the, based on prior discussions and prior uh, issues before the board, the board's Interpretation of the ordinance is 1943 subsection B3 uh, is the section that we're proceeding under reconstruction or replacement of a non conforming structure, which is located closer than the required setback from the property line. And my understanding is we don't 
meet the first half of the paragraph in this instance because there's an increase in the number of square feet of floor area. So therefore, we're on the second half of the paragraph, which states reconstruction not in compliance with these limitations, and I'm paraphrasing here, may be permitted provided that such reconstruction is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent as determined by the Zoning Board of Appeals, and that's why it's before us, in accordance with the purposes of this ordinance. So it seems like the only aspect of our analysis is whether the setback requirement is being met to the greatest practical extent. I would also add it, it sends us back to relocation, which in the, the second paragraph of relocation, uh, that's where it talks about size of the lot, slope of the land, and, and also mentions impact on view. Ah, great, good. Very good point. Thank I you. also, if we need to find other strands to assist here, it's the, the purpose, nine, 912 to encourage the most appropriate use of the land. Now, if this property has been on the market for however long, months, uh, it's apparently not attractive in the current state. Now, the argument is that we can let it state as is. I just looked at the tax map, and then the tax is about $2,000 a year or half year, whatever it is. Um, now, making an improvement, a substantial investment, increases the revenue for tax purposes. It, there appears to be a sale ready to go, subject to our dis discussion this evening. Well, I, for me, the fact that uh, relocation, there is the direct reference in the very last paragraph up to relocation, and the fact that determining whether it's met to the greatest practical extent possible includes assessment of the impact of views, that right there is the hook that I see. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from people? Are we in a position we want to take a vote on this? Would somebody like to make a motion so we could take a vote on this? I move we approve the application um, for reconstruction slash re placement of this property in compliance with the boundary retracement and as-built plans for a lot at number two Tucker Lane by Ross Boundary Surveys dated April 2013. And it's a plan packet. Is there a second? Second, Chris. Okay. I had a point of order as to query the significance of the single pager. Or is that going to be a second uh, motion? Um, I wasn't going to do say anything on that. So, for my clarification, the motion stands that we're talking about the thing that can be built is described as what you just read out. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion before us? Just noting that what we're approving is this exact plan and not a deviation in any way from this plan. I think that's what the motion is implying. Yep. That's my understanding of it. Okay. Okay. Um, so all those in favor of the, uh, the motion, say aye or raise your hand. Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes 5-0. Finding of facts. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is a request to reconstruct and expand a single family dwelling per section 1943B3 of the zoning ordinance of 2 Tucker Lane. Uh, and 
I, I guess I have a question. Is it really, at the end of the day, 194-3B3, or is it really B2, relocation? Three. And uh, three makes a reference in the very last sentence that, in effect, Yep. Oh, that's okay. funny. There's yep. a typo. There's a no. typo at the end of that. No, second. that's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> it goes with my overall impression of our <laughs> ordinance. But. Okay, number two. Michael Richard and Susan Barnacle have a purchase and sale agreement for the property. Three, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property, and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system and other on-site soil suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. The, four, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Five, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. Uh, extent. And six, do we want to add an additional finding of facts, which, which is that the, that the, um, the, the, the reconstruction will take place in accordance with the, with the plans as submitted by, um, Ross, uh, Ross Boundary Surveys. Can we put that in as a new four and then make the existing four, five, and the existing five, six, so it's clear what we're talking about when we say the proposed structure in those two. So add a new four that says, um, what would it say? The reconstruction. Shall comply with the, and then cite the plans from the little description in the box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to read it because it's a lot of words. The, the reconstruction will comply with the building plans as submitted for the record by, is that what I'm referencing there, you think? Ross Boundary Surveys, April 2013. Here's I can put the job number on there. Job number 21304CE. See, I don't need glasses. I have such an engineer. I have a query. <laughs> Sorry, I have a, a, a query. On the, um, the first page, we are referring to the, the boundary survey. That merely describes the survey of the land itself. The I think architect, we're referencing the name of the company, Ross Boundary Surveys, that prepared the plans. Yeah, but the, on the next page in the bottom right, we have Cape Cottage Home Design. Technically, the boundary survey is done by a different company that does the plan yeah, for the building. Um, but I viewed it as a reference to this particular exhibit within Fine. the submission. I see what you're saying. So that third page is also the boundary survey with stuff drawn on it, yeah. And then the other two are Cape Cottage Home Design. Point. The first two pages are the boundary survey. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I mean, I could add Cape, Cape Design, Cape Cottage to Home Design, if that's, but I mean, stapled together, it's hermetically sealed. Okay. Can I make one other point? Yes, sure. Uh, I think number two should be changed uh, to Eileen Monahan. It, originally, it was going to be Michael Richard and Susan Barnacle representing this. And, and I forgot to change the draft findings, but the, the official applicant tonight is Eileen Monahan, who is the owner of the property. Okay. 
Uh, so what are we saying? Uh, we're just going to say Elaine Monahan is the owner of the property? Yes. Uh, sorry. Um, the tax maps has a different owner of record. Oh, right. Um, Probably has... Uh, that woman, the... Collaborators, LLC. The, um, yeah, cool Leona Oceana. I have Cove Collaborators, LLC. Yep. I'm a member of that. Yeah. And I have, I have yeah. So, so uh, on behalf of, you're here on behalf of Cove Collaborators, LLC. Okay. On behalf of Cove Collaborators, LLC, is the applicant and owner of property. Okay. Eileen Monahan, member on behalf of Cove Collaborators LLC, is the applicant and owner of the property. Okay. Okay. Um, and then uh, I, I think we, uh, let's just make the reconstruction will comply with the building plans as submitted for the record by Ross Boundary Surveys, April. 2013 job number 21304CE as item 6 to the finding of facts. Yeah, although I, it, I think the technicality was the motion made reference to the Ross Boundary Service, Ross Boundary Surveys plan, but the building plan is the plan from the Cape Cottage home design. And the building plan attached there too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> and the building plan. I'll go you one better by Cape Cottage Home Design attached there too. Okay. Oh, sorry, John. After Cape Cottage Design, could you add the date? Um, because the date is May 5th, 2003. That's what would, I don't want a variation, uh, not a variation, a version control problem coming back to us. Although technically then the last one is May 6th, 2013. There's a stamp on the front that actually says May 6th, 2013. Okay, I'm gonna read these all again. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, this is the request to reconstruct and expand a single family dwelling per section 1943B3 of the zoning ordinance at 2 Tucker Lane, map R3, lot 9V. Eileen Monahan, member on behalf of Cove Collaborators LLC, is the applicant and owner of the property. Number three, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, and the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Four, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Five, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. Six, the reconstruction will comply with the building plan as submitted for the record by Ross Boundary Surveys, April 2013. Job number 21304 CE and the building plan by Cape Cottage Home Design attached here to, or there, I think, here to, here to, dated May 6, 2013. All in favor of the finding of facts? Any opposed? 5 0. Okay. Um, that's my agenda in this pile of paper. Is there any other uh, business to come before the board this evening? Oh, there there is. You're just handing me stuff. Okay. What's that? Just oh, okay, great. Okay. Um, with that, the, our zoning board meeting for this evening is concluded. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>